let's learn how to screen print. Stay tuned. What's going on fam? Welcome to Skill Tree where we learn how to do just about everything. So I was thinking about my channel and all the stuff we do, and I got it in my head that it would be nice to have like a t-shirt that rep the tree and the skill monkeys. Now, I could have paid a professional service to do this whole thing for me and whatever, but that's not really in keeping with what this channel is all about. So today we're gonna go over how to screen print a t-shirt. As always, the steps are gonna be listed in the description, so if you wanna skip around, you can go ahead and do that. All right, without much further ado, let's learn something new and level up this skill. That rhymed. Step one, creating the screens. Now, as the name suggests, use silkscreen print by printing through a silk screen, or at least through some sort of mesh fabric that is stretched over a wooden frame. Looking online, these screens are like 20 bucks a pop, but you can make these for way cheaper by just using a canvas from your local craft store and some voile fabric. Stuff's usually used for making like sheer curtains in case you have to ask. Now I was able to secure a box of six canvases for about 10 bucks. And a yard of that fabric was about $9, which gives us six screen printing screens for under 20 bucks. So we're gonna start by removing that canvas from the frame. Any of you painters may wanna avert your eyes now. Once cut, this stuff is super easy to remove. Simply rip and tear your way until it's all gone. Now you could take your time to remove all the staples, but I found just taking a hammer and pounding them all in to be faster and way more satisfying. Once smooth, it's time to add the titular screen. Cut the fabric so it's long enough to wrap around the sides of the frame. Lay your frame with the flattest side down on the fabric, then fold the side over and staple it in place. Now do the same to an adjacent side. For the rest of it, stretch the material as tightly as you can without tearing the fabric and staple it in place. Finally, cut away the excess and staple the corners into place. you should be able to bounce a coin off the fabric. And that's it, pretty simple, right? Now you could also make the frames out of picture frames or leftover wood, but I found this to be way simpler. And with the kit I got, each frame ended up only being 60 cents a piece. All in all, that worked out in my financial favor. Also for this project, I tried to use the finest mesh I could find. Think of the holes in the mesh like pixels on a screen. The more of them there are, the more detail you can fit in. Speaking of the screen, step two, prepping the screen. So there are a few different techniques to silkscreen. The one we're using today is called photo emulsion. In a nutshell, all we're doing is slathering on a photo sensitive medium, putting our design on top and exposing it to light. The medium hardens when exposed to light, while the bits covered by our design don't. Once cleaned, it leaves us with a detailed stencil. But first things first, let's add that emulsion to our screens. For this, I'm using the Diazo Emulsion Kit by Speedball. This contains the emulsion medium, a sensitizer, and also an emulsion remover if you want to clean the screen. So quick note, that bottle of sensitizer is gonna seem to be empty when you first open it. Stuff is in there, trust me. You just have to add water to it and shake it up. Then add the sensitizer water mix to the emulsion compound and stir well. It'll go from this sky blue to a mossy green color. Once it's consistent, you can store it away for I think it says up to a month or so, but we're gonna use this thing right away. Once ready, it's time to add the emulsion to the screen. So the goal here is gonna to be to get an even streak-free coat on the whole screen. So it being a photosensitive compound, I really shouldn't be doing this in full light as it could cause the emulsion to start to cure. The directions say it's safe until it dries, but just in case. Once it dries, you're gonna to wanna to be really careful about how you expose the signal light. I read that one good way to get around it is to use like a red party light you can buy from Home Depot as the red light doesn't have any UV and it won't cause the emulsion to react. Once you have the emulsion in place and even, store it in a dark place to dry. I use this patented box with a blanket over it technology very advanced. Step three, burning your image. With your screens all prepped and ready, it's time to burn the image we want to print. I elected to use my skill monkey graphic, which was created by the talented Zilla Bean. She's linked in the description. Seriously great artist and awesome person. Highly recommend you go check her stuff out. For about $1.35 at Staples, I was able to get this printed on transparency paper. Now bear in mind, everything that shows up in black on your image is what's going to show up when you print. So make sure you plan accordingly. So all you need to expose the image is a good light source. To this end, I made this little rig out of a 500 watt work light I bought from Home Depot for $15. Then I mounted it to this little frame I made out of leftover wood. Now you don't have to go with anything this crazy. You can just have a light over the top of it. That being said, there will be a link in the description with detailed directions on how to make this particular setup. To set the image, 
Simply center your graphic over your screen and turn on your light. I use an exposure time of six minutes, but yours may vary. Don't worry if it isn't right the first time, just use the emulsion remover and give it another shot. You could also test this out on your first run by putting your image under the light and then every two minutes covering over another part of it. Keep track of how long each section takes to cover over and you should be able to isolate your correct timing with the light you have. With your exposure time achieved, wash out the unexposed medium with the hose, revealing your image. Again, do your best to expose this to as little light as possible on the way from your light source to the hose. While trying to shoot this one, I took too long in the sun and nothing came out. You can just kind of see the faint outline where it didn't set up the same time everything else set up, but the sun totally hardened this. Not a big deal though, because I had a pack of six and the second one came out amazing. I'm honestly super impressed with that. That came out awesome. All right, sweet. Now that we have a detailed stencil, it's time for step four, printing the image. All right, here comes the magic. After your screen dries, apply tape all around the inner edges to both sides. This is to stop ink from seeping out where you don't want it. Now, lay the shirt to be printed as flat as possible and position your design where you want it. For this application, I'm using a white fabric ink from Speedball. Apply a line of ink to one side of the image, then spread it thoroughly over the graphic. Now, applying pressure, back scrape, removing all the excess ink. Bam! Check that out! That's awesome! All right, calm down. We're not done yet. Finish off the whole thing with a heat gun to dry and set the ink. This could also be done by covering it with a paper towel and ironing it. Make sure you keep that gun moving so as not to burn the fabric. Once the ink is dried, that sucker's ready to wear. All right, I gotta be honest, I was freaking thrilled with how this came out. That moment when you lift the screen and there's the exact image you wanted on the shirt, I don't know, just like a pure moment of creative satisfaction for me. Uh, feelings like that are a great reason to get out there and just make something. It feels really good. You know what else feels good? Well, you remember to hit that thumbs up button if you like what you saw and subscribe to my channel. Also ring the bell so you know when I release new content. Finally, let me know in the comments section if there's any skills you wanna see covered and I will add it to the list. Well, I gotta go. I got like 600 more of these to print. Let's see if I charge $15 a pop and then I, oh. In the meantime, keep leveling up, you. Maybe if I buy the shirts, I'll call it.